Recording by Dale Grothman. It's nice to go on a pleasant journey. There is, however, a very difficult question concerning the other half of the ticket. Pleasant Journey by Richard F. Thiem. What do you call it? the buyer asked Jenkins. I named it Journey Home, but you can think up a better name if you want to. I'll guarantee that it sells, though. There's nothing like it on any midway. I'd like to try it out first, of course, Allenby said. TriStar uses only the very best, you know. Yes, I know, Jenkins said. He had heard the line before from almost every carnival buyer to whom he had sold. He did not do much business with carnivals. There weren't enough to keep him busy with large or worthwhile rides and features. The amusement parks of the big cities were usually the best markets. Allenby warily eyed the entrance, a room fashioned from a sideshow booth. A rough red curtain concealed the inside. Over the doorway, in crude dark blue paint, was lettered journey home behind the doorway was a large barn-like structure newly painted white where jenkins did his planning his building and his finishing when he sold a new ride it was either transported from the inside building through the large pull-away doors in the back or taken apart piece by piece and shipped to the park or carney that bought it six thousand's a lot of money the buyer said just try it jenkins told him the buyer shrugged okay he said let's go in they walked through the red curtain inside the booth entrance was a soft cushioned easy chair also red secured firmly in place it was a piece of salvage from a two-engine commercial airplane a helmet looking like a flash gordon accessory hair dryer combination was set over it Jenkins flipped a switch, and the room became bright with light. I thought you said it wasn't a thrill ride, Allenby said, looking at the helmet-like structure, ominously hanging over the chair. It isn't, Jenkins said, smiling. Sit down. He strapped the buyer into place in the chair. Hey, wait a minute, Allenby protested. Why the straps? Leave everything to me and don't worry. Jenkins said, fitting the headgear into place over the buyer's head. The back of it fitted easily over the entire rear of the skull, down to his neck. The front came just below the eyes. After turning the light off, Jenkins pulled the curtain closed. It was completely black inside. Have a nice trip, Jenkins said, pulling a switch on the wall and pushing a button on the back of the chair at the same time. Currents shifted and repatterned themselves inside the helmet, and were fed into Allenby at the base of his skull, at the mandula. The currents of alternating ions mixed with the currents of his varied and random brain waves, and the impulses of one became the impulses of the other. Allenby jerked once with the initial shock, and was then still, his mind and body fused with the pulsating currents of the chair suddenly roger allenby was almost blinded by bright naked light allenby's first impression was one of disappointment at the failure of the device jenkins was reliable usually and hadn't come up with a fluke yet allenby got out of the chair and called for jenkins holding on to the arm of the chair to keep his bearings hey where are you jenkins he tried to look around him but the bright intense light revealed nothing he swore to himself extending his arms in front of him for something to grasp as he groped for a solid the light became more subdued and shifted from white into a light pleasant blue shapes and forms rearranged themselves in front of him and gradually became distinguishable he was in a city or on the top of a city a panoramic view was before him and he saw the creations of human beings obviously but a culture far removed from his a slight path of white began at his feet and expanded as it fell slightly ramp-like over and into the city 
the buildings were whiter than the gate of false dreams that penelope sung of and the streets and avenues were blue not gray people wore white and milled around in the streets below him they shouted as one their voices were not cries but songs and they sang his name he started walking on the white strip it was flexible and supported his weight easily then he was running finding his breath coming in sharp gasps and he was among the crowds they smiled at him as he passed by and held out their hands to him their faces shone with a brilliance of awareness and he knew that they loved him troubled frightened he kept running blindly and abruptly there were no people no buildings he was walking now at the left side of a modern superhighway against the traffic autos sped by him too quickly for him to determine the year of model across the divider the traffic was heavier autos speeding crazily ahead in the direction he was walking none stopped he halted for a moment and looked around him there was nothing on the sides of the road no people no fields no farms no cities no blackness there was nothing but far ahead there was a green etched around the horizon as the road dipped and the cars sped over it he walked more quickly catching his breath and came closer and closer to the green allenby stopped momentarily and turned around looking at the highway that was behind him it was gone only bleak black and gray hills of rock and rubble were there no cars no life he shuddered and continued on toward the end of the highway the green blended in with the blue of the sky now closer he came until just over the next rise in the road the green was bright not knowing or caring why he was filled with expectation and he ran again and was in the meadow all around him were the greens of the grasses and leaves and the yellows and blues of the field of flowers it was warm a spring day with none of the discomfort of summer heat jubilant roger spun around in circles inhaling the fragrance of the field listening to the hum of insect life stirring back to awareness after a season of inactivity then he was running and tumbling barefoot his shirt open feeling the soft grass give way underfoot and the soil was good and rich beneath him he saw a stream ahead with clear water melodiously flowing by him he went to it and drank the cold good water quenching all his thirst clearing all the stickiness of his throat and mind he dashed the water on his face and was happy and felt the coolness of it as the breeze picked up and swept his hair over his forehead with a shake of his head he tossed it back in place and ran again feeling the air rush into his lungs with coolness and vibrancy unknown since adolescence no nicotine spasms choked him and the air was refreshing then up the hill he sped pushing hard as the marigolds and dandelions parted before him at the top he stopped and looked and smiled ecstatically as he saw the green rolling land and the stream curving around from behind the house his house the oaks forming a secret lair behind it and he felt the youth of the world in his lungs and under his feet he heard a voice calling from the house his house calling him to saturday lunch i'm coming he cried happily and was tumbling down the hill rolling over and over the hill and the ground and the sky blending blues and greens and nothing had perspective the world was spinning and everything was black again he shook his head to clear the dizziness well jenkins said how was it allenby looked up at him as jenkins swung the helmet back and unhooked the seat belt he squinted as jenkins flipped the light switch and the brightness hit him his surroundings became distinguishable again very slowly and he knew he was back in the room where was i he asked jenkins shrugged i don't know it was all yours you went wherever you wanted to go 
wherever home is jenkins smiled down at him did you visit more than one place he asked the buyer nodded i thought so it seems that a person tries a few before finally deciding where to go the buyer stood up and stretched could i please see the barn he asked meaning the huge workshop where jenkins did the construction work sure jenkins said and opened the door opposite the red curtain into the workshop it was empty you mean it was all up here i didn't move at all he tapped his cranium with his index finger that's right jenkins said anxiously do you want it or not allenby stood looking into the empty room yes yes of course he said how long did the whole thing last about ten seconds jenkins said looking at his watch it seems much longer to the traveler i'm not sure but i think the imagined time varies with each person it's always around ten seconds of actual time though so you can make a lot of money on it even if you only have one machine money allenby said money yes of course he took a checkbook from his inside pocket and hurriedly wrote a check for six thousand dollars when can we have it delivered he asked you want it shipped the usual way no allenby said staring at the red cushioned chair send it air freight then bill us for the expense whatever you say jenkins said smiling taking the check you'll have it by the first of the week probably i'll put the complete parts and the assembly manual inside the crate good good but maybe i should test it again you know star time can't really afford to make a mistake as expensive as this no jenkins said quickly then i'll guarantee it of course if it doesn't work out i'll give you a full refund but don't try it again today don't let anyone have it more than once in a day stamp them on the hand or something when they take the trip why jenkins looked troubled i'm not sure but people might not want to come back too many times in a row and they might be able to stay there in their minds of course of course well it's been a pleasure doing business with you mr jenkins i hope to see you again soon they walked back to allenby's not very late model car and shook hands allenby drove away on the way back to the hotel and as he lay for a long time in the bathtub letting the warmness drift away from the water the thought ran over and over in his mind they might be able to stay there allenby said to himself they might be able to stay there he smiled warmly at a crack in the plaster as he thought of the first of the week and the fragrant meadow the end of pleasant journey by richard f theme